Have you ever wondered what it's like to be a law student at Quinnipiac University? Follow me in my journey to Oxford and you'll find out. Hi, my name is Kirsten Cunningham. It is currently 10 p.m. We are at JFK um, Airport in New York City. We are on our way to London. We're going to Oxford University for the Consortium on Human Rights and Human Trafficking. We are in our dorms getting ready for um, the first reception, which is tonight. We just spent the past three hours walking around Oxford University. It's gorgeous. The buildings are beautiful. Um, and now we're getting down to business. This is Danielle. She's my colleague on this trip with me. So Danielle, what are you excited about for this week? I'm really excited to learn about new topics that we aren't able to get access to in the classroom and see it firsthand at Oxford University. Hey Danielle. Hey, yeah. Where are we going? We're going to our first session at Oxford. <laughs> yeah. Are you excited? I'm so excited, aren't you? Christine? I'm very excited. So now, as you can see, addressing a really important um, subject in our theme on the ethics of human reality. So we had two sessions this morning already, one by Hugo Slim, it's just kind of like the introductory part of migration and just how to look at it in like a global perspective. And really just that migration is more of a normal thing than I think a lot of people realize. And I teach immigration now, so that's part of what I do. And one of the things that I want to sort of come to at the very end is that I share this Committee on Human Trafficking, and we are looking at state initiatives to address some of the issues. So what would you say um, today's biggest takeaway was? Yes, yeah, so well, today we talked about the impact of ethics on global human migration and is responsible for addressing some of the most contentious human rights issues right now. And some of these topics are seeking some concern from the world. So how were your um, presentations today? I think that our presentations today were extremely enlightening. You know, you don't really think about moving and then what happens after moving. So like when we hear about immigration and migration, we don't necessarily understand what happens after. Kirsten, what are we doing right now? We're punting. Actually, you're punting, Kirsten. And then all of us are riding in this lovely boat with Kirsten at the helm. So we just got done with our first day. We just ate dinner. We are walking back to our rooms now. We had a lovely meal with some people. Yes, and one of our um, presenters who works with victims of human trafficking, um, specifically those of a part of a minority. Um, and she's out of Jersey City, and she also spoke today. She spoke with, alongside Sheila Hare, our professor. People really enjoyed her presentation. Good morning, we have lots in store today. We have lots of presentations, lots of speakers, lots of deep thoughts. We're going more into the topic of refugees and we'll probably explore a little more. Currently, the Washington Post says that there are approximately 12,000 people who are being affected by this policy, which is also known as the Remain in Mexico policy. So the people who are presenting themselves to the border are claiming asylum, and they will be turned away, basically, and given back to the Mexican government. issues are key issues, they were kind of hard to decide because everything is convoluted and very complex. But we decided to do the effect on society, um, the poor economy, government distractions, and a lack of information in general. We had um, a really interesting day. So the first speaker was Roger Zetter, and he spoke to us on how um, there's climate refugees and there's not really 
a place for them to be categorized in the system. Catherine Loon spoke with us as well today on internally displaced persons. These internally displaced people, even though they're moving within their country, they're still facing economic issues, they're facing no help from their government, um, no support. So it's been a very long day. I'm gonna go to bed and I will check back in with you tomorrow. As we're discussing human rights or statelessness or, or migration, um, what's important about the language that we're using? What are some of the presumptions um, in the way we've structured uh, the system of international law. Tujata's like main principles and main ideas were we should recognize human rights globally, like as all people and human beings um, who deserve rights. So on that note, I'm gonna go to Bodleian Library, which is where Harry Potter was filmed. It's like the staircase, the dining hall, and the library. Today is the last day of the consortium. Uh, we have been working on presentations all week, so we're about to present it today. Um, Quinnipiac is doing their focus on human trafficking. Uh, I'm gonna finish getting ready, and we'll see you later. So I'm gonna talk about Quinnipiac University School of Law. Um, we have two um, areas in which we do work in human trafficking. We have the Human Trafficking Prevention Project, and we have the um, Civil Justice Clinic. The Civil Justice Clinic, we have, I think right now, maybe three clients um, that have been uh, victims, their survivors of human trafficking. I worked with one specifically last year, and the services that we kind of are helping them with are pardons, vacatures, and certificates of employabilities. Employability. We are done for the day, and we have a gala tonight. So we just got done with the gala. It's the end of the consortium. Um, Sujata, how do you think this week went? This week was incredible. I loved it. Amazing students. These are real human rights activists, students engaged in scholarship and the practice of human rights. I'm so proud to have heard from them, to be engaged with them, and to see what they're going to do in the future. Because we get to come together to have formal and informal discussions um, and to really build a community of practice, a community of practice where students are now going to keep in touch with one another, keep in touch with their faculty members, and we're going to, you know, collaborate together on human rights. And I really look forward uh, to, to, to the work we're going to be doing. That was a week in the consortium. Not only do I think it's going to further advance my career as a law student, I think it will definitely have some way in what I choose to do after law school. If you want to keep watching Quinnipiac students and what they're doing here and around the world, stay tuned. The next video will be coming up soon.